Any others that you? Um... And the town manager. <laughs> I'd say for the maintenance component, P Peter, we should have physical services. Yeah, I think I think ultimately this one is going to have a broad needs to have a broad uh, range of uh, of partners. So town council, town manager, physical services. If the health district can be helpful on that one, count yeah. us then too. Yeah, this is probably like an all all partners. All y'all y'all come free. Yeah, <laughs> right, right. Okay. And then uh, number two, uh, create a bicycle and pedestrian uh, advisory committee. In order to create that committee, the lead agency would be the town council. So I've got them as a lead. And then once again, this is another all category, I would say, uh, you know, I ran out of space here. Um, so maybe, you know, just um, once again, saying all in that particular uh, category, it's going to ultimately be up to the town council as to who uh, and what organizations are included in that recommendation. But nevertheless, that would be an all, I would think, unless somebody feels differently. Number three, uh, we talked a little bit about this at one point previously, evaluate the existing sidewalk snow removal policy uh, and enforcement program to encourage more timely and effective compliance. Uh, every storm, there are, um, let's say, recidivists who uh, are very uh, late to removing snow. Uh, and it's not a high priority uh, item for the police department, but nevertheless. So uh, it's, this is a recommendation just to simply look at uh, the policy and what goes on with enforcement and potentially come up with some uh, recommendations since this is a town ordinance. Uh, once again, the town council would be the lead. And then we've got the town manager, police department, and physical services as partners to that particular recommendation. If anyone thinks any of these recommendations are uh, not um, appropriate to be in here, please um, don't assume that they should you know, continue to be in the recommendations. If anyone feels strongly that we really don't need to do that, please um, please let me know. This is Tom Brown. Um, yeah, Tom. I, really, I really like number three. Um, I'm wondering, just from my experience in the fall, uh, is could we add maybe the, the leaves being placed inappropriately into the road as well? Because that creates, even just for cars, it creates a hazard as well as bikes and everything else. Tom, I think I would probably add that as an additional separate. Okay. Because um, they both have different issues related to enforcement and time of the year and in those kinds of things. So I would probably, it would probably rise to another, an, another level and another recommendation. Okay. Okay. Uh, number four, establish a program to implement and monitor the safe route to school recommendations for each elementary school and the middle school. Um, there were, uh, there was a report done for in 2015 for every one of the elementary schools and the middle school making a series of recommendations uh, for safety to encourage kids to walk and bike to school. Um, some of them have been implemented, uh, others uh, uh, not so much. So um, we have the lead as the Weathersfield school system with the police department, the town engineer, the PTOs um, involved in, in that um, in those recommendations and getting them implemented. Okay, number five, establish a GIS database to monitor uh, all pedestrian and bicycle improvement projects. Uh, lists all the things that we need to pull together. Uh, unfortunately, that seems to make sense for the 10 engineers uh, lead. Um, um, and then obviously having the, it could be the uh, I, the work has to be done by somebody. So I've got the town engineers department uh, as the as the lead on that as they maintain our GIS system. I have the, uh, the bicycle and pedestrian advisory group obviously involved, um, uh, planning department, physical services. So those are a couple of the um, partner organizations. Just to have a database so that we have you know, a running uh, inventory of, of the improvements that are being made throughout town as we go forward. Number six, uh, review the language in the zoning regulations as it relates to sidewalk repairs uh, uh, to make it necessary uh, improvements to support the plan. Since it's a zoning regulation, 
the lead agency would be the Planning and Zoning Commission uh, with uh, support from the Planning Department, the Town Manager's Office, uh, Town Council, if need be, and, and the Town Engineer. Just, uh, I'm gonna keep on going unless people jump in here. Number seven, include a bicycle parking requirement in the parking section of the zoning regulations for future development projects. Right now, we do not have any language in our zoning regulations relating to that. Uh, we have been uh, at the staff level recommending that folks include bicycle, bicycle parking in some of the recent projects. Um, the, board, the Borden project, for example, uh, has a uh, bicycle storage area for the residents there. Um, believe it or not, the Popeye's uh, restaurant that we just approved agreed to add a, uh, some bike parking. So we're doing it at the um, recommendation level. It's not a requirement of the zoning regulations. So once again, that would be a planning and zoning lead with uh, support from the planning office, the town engineer, uh, the bike pedestrian advisory group. Okay, number eight, review the effectiveness of the sidewalk maintenance repair program to consider a cost sharing formula with residents. Right now, all of the costs for sidewalk uh, repairs and maintenance are borne by the individual property owners. Uh, there had been some discussion at previous meetings and at some of the public meetings we've had that the town should take a look at that. Uh, other towns have matching programs or a 75-25 share. Uh, if we were to change that formula, it obviously affects the town budget. So that would be a town council conversation uh, with the town manager uh, weighing in and obviously the town engineer weighing in. So it's a recommendation just to review that um, policy and the program and see if there's a need to make any changes. Peter, a question, who yep. currently does that sidewalk maintenance repair program sit under? Engineer or physical services? Uh, town engineer uh, right now. Uh, we have a part-time okay. enforcement person. So he, he reports to Derek uh, in, in the engineering department. Okay, no, that was, that was, so that was my question. And then my other point is, I'm not sure the council, they'll act on it, but I think someone else needs to be the lead to bring it to them. I had lead in there since they're ultimately the the uh, the uh, decision maker. So I would probably also add to the you know the bike pedestrian advisory group, which might mm -hmm. you know do do the, uh, the the heavy lifting with the research right. and or the town engineer or somebody like that. So I'll add the bike pedestrian advisory. Yeah. Committee. Okay. Peter, do we want to make that any stronger instead of it being a recommendation to review it, make it a recommendation to recommend it? I, I think without having the research and without, you know, reaching out and finding out what's going on in other towns, uh, it's hard to make an ultimate recommendation. I, you know, and also we would need to make a specific recommendation if we were to make it any stronger that we do a 50-50 or we do a 80-20 or something like that. So I would, I feel more comfortable without having all of that information available to us, just simply making that recommendation, because it's ultimately not up to the plan. It's uh, really up to the town um, council. And it has potentially significant uh, cost implications if um, some of that is now coming out of the tax dollars rather than the individual residents. So um, if we use the word analyze instead of review, would that strengthen it? I think it analyze might analyze the effectiveness um, of the sidewalk maintenance program to consider and to consider cost for, sharing for research and review or something like that. Yep. Okay. Uh, number nine, review the effectiveness of the existing part time sidewalk enforcement program. And that's a related, uh, obviously, a related topic. Right now, we have a, a, a part time sidewalk enforcement um, staff person. Um, uh, Derek, I don't know if you want to jump in here, but we have talked about whether that should be full time. Um, but the town engineer would ultimately take the lead on that in terms of, of presenting that to the town council. Obviously, the town manager and then the town council would also be involved in, in that decision making. How about Peter. making eight and nine both priority A? 
at the risk of making everything A. Yep. Okay. Peter, now that I've unmuted myself, uh, the uh, about the uh, part about uh, um, doing a matching program for enforcement or for repairs and so forth, uh, is there uh, something about um, adding si building sidewalks and, and closing the gaps or? Yeah, there's a different recommendation coming up on, uh, on the sidewalk okay. gap, gap program. Right. Yep. Okay, good. Okay. Peter, I'm okay with leaving eight and nine as Bs. Just the reason I had them as Bs is there are cost uh, implications, which are potential barriers that some of the other recommendations right. don't necessarily have. So that's why uh, I think it's important. But I think because of that uh, budget uh, ramification, uh, it became a B. Yeah. Uh, so I would I would agree with you, Chris, on on that. Yeah. Uh and also, if everything is an A, you're not going to get anything done. <laughs> right. Because right. then which one do you pick? Right. So I, would, I say leave it. Yeah, if anyone sees something that should be a C, please let me know, because that would be the only one in these all of these recommendations. We need to probably find a C somewhere, too. Just put that plug in there. All right, let's, um, let's move on if I can um, advance here, advance it here. Oops, gone too far now. All right. Back one. All right. Uh, continuing on with evaluation. Number 10, uh, evaluate the vegetation removal tree trimming program to ensure that obstructions, overhangs, and hazards are removed in a timely manner. Um, uh, that is, I, I, I'm, actually, I'm not quite sure who's really responsible for that, but nevertheless, I, I think our property maintenance officer has some uh, involvement there, but I, I think it's unclear, um, you know, who really takes the lead on, on that uh, and making sure that uh, these kinds of obstructions, um, whether it's trees or bushes or whatever it might be, uh, are uh, taken care of uh, or on somebody's plate. So uh, since uh, that, and that would ultimately come from the town manager with some input from uh, the police department, potentially the property maintenance officer and the town, the town engineer all have some level of involvement in that. I guess I'm thinking that could be a C. Okay. Uh, number 11, review the existing posted speed limits on all local streets and consider changes where appropriate. It's my understanding that any changes to any speed limits on our street network, local street network, ultimately have to be approved by the state. So that is a barrier on its own uh, to making any changes. So it's I've got it uh, ranked as a B priority. Uh, clearly, the police department would uh, be the lead on that with input from the town engineer. Potentially, Connecticut, as I said earlier, Connecticut DOT is involved in that, and maybe also the Bicycle and Pedestrian uh, Advisory uh, Committee. Maybe I shouldn't say on all local streets. That's an awfully uh, that's a big task. So uh, maybe I need to uh, modify the description to say on, you know, um, streets of you know particular concern or something uh, more specific than just on all local streets. Don't we, Peter, didn't we include as part of this plan kind of like what streets were more typically going to be used by cyclists? Uh, we, we will. We have. We're, we'll be getting into all of that at the next um, meeting. But we also have, we did identify uh, a, a whole number of streets where folks had complained that the speed uh, was a problem. Um, so we could probably adjust this accordingly to you yeah. know streets streets of local concern or, or something uh, right. like or that. Or tie it back to the map where it's you know used by pedestrian right. cyclists more frequently whatever. Yes. Yep I think that's correct. Peter can I can you go back to number 10 I just had a thought when sure. it comes to uh, you have vegetation removal or tree trimming and you have uh, removing snow from sidewalks and then you have, um, not yet anyway, but you have leaf removal from streets. Can that all be combined into one in just some sort of like an enforcement kind of, uh, you know, bullet or something that just makes, that, that it, it could be even like a, a central kind of complaint line that goes to one person who's in charge of monitoring all that and enforcing it? 
Yeah, I think it would it would require um, ordinance changes and things like that, but that's obviously not the end of the world, making those changes and coming up with an overall program that we focus uh, and give it to one entity or, uh, uh, but certainly we could craft uh, those three different recommendations into one particular and, you know, have it become a future task for um, either the bike group or police department or the town manager. So yeah, I, I, I think we could probably work that in somehow in that way. Okay. I like that idea. Yep. Uh, number 12, establish baseline data and to regularly measure the number of bicyclists and pedestrians. I don't think we have done that at all. Um, Krog has their annual um, bike and pedestrian counts. I don't think we've ever had a location uh, in town where uh, that has actually happened. So we really do not have a baseline. Um, it's not a huge number. We don't get a lot of cyclists just yet because we don't have the facilities in place. But nevertheless, uh, at some point, we should have uh, that information. Obviously, it's not an A priority. It, it's something that at some point uh, we should uh, try and do. So at least we have a starting point for uh, what our volumes are. And Krog would be involved potentially. So maybe the next bike count, we uh, try and get a location and get volunteers to do it here in town. What if you tied that to specific improvements like, like uh, you know, some of the streets that, that you just did, like Hartford Avenue, say, where you now have the uh, lines and, and uh, possibly some markings? Right. Yep. Okay. Um, another uh, evaluation uh, recommendation, track and evaluate bike and pedestrian crashes. Um, Wait, Peter, I'm sorry. Can we go back for that at sure. baseline data? Yep. Um, we should also have bike, uh, bike walk Weathersfield on there. Okay. Okay. Uh, number 13, track and evaluate bike and pedestrian crashes uh, to address problems that lead uh, or that led to the crashes. Um, clearly the police department uh, does uh, post uh, crash analysis, uh, but it's not done in a in a uh, formal, you know, kind of conversational way. Um, so uh, going forward, um, potentially annually or regularly, uh, we should be taking a look uh, at those um, crashes and collisions and at least uh, having a conversation about whether there are things that could have been done uh, to uh, to deal with those in advance. Um, I haven't heard that there's any particular trends that uh, with the accidents that we've had, but nevertheless, it would probably be a good policy that uh, on, when these unfortunate incidents do occur, that we have a, uh, a protocol in place to at least look at them and see if there's some actions um, that we would have control over uh, that might have avoided that. And that could be a, a lead act. The lead group could be the bike a pedestrian group as they meet and have those kind of conversations with the various stakeholders. Obviously the police department and potentially the town engineer uh, would be involved um, in that as well. Uh, let's see, number 14, explore demand for recreational bicycle facilities such as BMX parks, uh, cyclocross, those kinds of other facilities. This maybe could be a C as well. I don't know what I people think. I think it's a C. Yep. I was just going to volunteer that to be a C myself. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I mean, I like, I like that one for for like mountain bike trails as well, which I think would be more yep. common than the, yeah. the cyclocross and the BMX. But yep. um, I think some of that could be easy. Like some mountain bike trails could be an easier, much easier thing to do than the other two things. Yeah. Right. Um, if we put mountain bike, if you consider mountain bike trails, would that make you go down to a C still, or would that still stay at a B? Um, <clears throat> I think if we put mountain bikes first before BMX parks, you know, um, it might rise back up to a B. Because we have a lot of farm property that it could be very easy to just put a single track. Is this a good one for your bike club at the high school to be listed on there as willing to research that or explore oh, that? Absolutely. That, that could be a good program for them. 
Yeah. How much okay. of this reading is due to the fact that this is by the nature of the people who are here, not an age group that participates in those activities? I mean, would it be an A or a B if we looked at the wider community? Right. Then let's leave it as a B. Okay. I mean, there's a huge increase in the people mountain biking of all ages. And we do have some um, former farm properties that yep. we've talked about could to, could certainly be uh, improved a little bit for mountain bike, mountain bike, excuse me, mountain bike trails, uh, et cetera. So um, there is some opportunity there as well as the uh, maybe the demand. So okay. Um, Number 15, uh, kind of an obvious one, uh, produce an annual report of Weathersfield's bicycle and pedestrian accomplishments. That could be the bike and pedestrian advisory group, the planning department's input, the town engineer as he monitors uh, progress uh, going forward. Um, number 16, uh, aggressively pursue grant funding for top projects on the prioritized list of bicycle and pedestrian improvements. So that obviously should be an ongoing pursuit uh, as we need to supplement our limited budget dollars. So once again, that could be the bike group uh, overseeing that with uh, support from Bike Walk Weathersfield, Town Engineer, Plant, you know, uh, all, that's almost like an all. That's another one of those alls. Yeah, I was going to say, because you should throw the Heritage Commission in since we've partnered on some. Yep. Okay. Uh, let's move on here. Once again, if I can. All right, uh, moving into the education category. Um, the first recommendation, create programs to teach adults about the foundation of bicycle road riding and improve their cycling skills. Um, that could be the uh, bike pedestrian group. It could be bike walk weathers field, but clearly uh, both of those um, should uh, be involved. Park and rec is uh, also a valuable partner there. So certainly some park and rec programs could be developed uh, that are targeted to adults who might not have a great deal of experience uh, with bicycle riding and could use some assistance improving uh, their skills. We do have some trained uh, certified uh, uh, trainers here in town who could certainly um, jump in there and assist in that regard. So we didn't wanna just focus on, on kids. We've added a recommendation that uh, potentially we should consider whether there's a need for an adult education program. Uh, number two, establish pedestrian education programs, classes, or clinics. Uh, so this is a pedestrian recommendation in terms of safety. This could be a school uh, age program, uh, or it could be an adult uh, uh, education program. Once again, the bike pedestrian advisory group, park and rec, bike walk weathers field would be involved in that. As a, as a partner organization. Number three is a, a kind of an existing program that uh, got off to a, a start this year, uh, but unfortunately uh, the pandemic arrived, but um, uh, it's an existing program. So it, it tends to uh, rate a little bit more high than some of the others. Uh, continue to work with the Weathersfield school system to expand the bike and walking uh, training and education for children into the curriculum. Uh, Kevin or Rob, if you want to chime in here, I had uh, uh, bike, biking and walking. I don't know if your curriculum includes both of those. Maybe you want to just jump in here real quick. Yeah, the intention is for both. Okay, so that's that's correct then as it as it sits. Okay. Yes. Number four, establish an education and media campaign targeted to property owners to inform the responsibilities for sidewalk maintenance and snow removal. This potentially could, we could go back and add this into the other uh, recommendations that we were going to uh, lump together. So maybe we can move that um, into the previous category and combine it uh, with um, some of those other recommendations. It's very related to that. Good idea to do education and enforcement or education first and then enforcement afterwards, something yeah. like that. Yes. Part of it could be Peter George here. Uh, part of it could be a notice with your annual tax bill in yep. July 
where you noted near the responsibility for anyone who has sidewalks that they are responsible for maintaining them. Yes. And you should throw the leaf um, issue under the education and media campaign, the leaf removal, yep. as well as the sidewalk and snow. So there could be a general recommendation that we need to, you know, yep. educate about leaf, you know, storage, snow mm -hmm. removal, uh, sidewalk maintenance, and then have another one where we need a more robust program of enforcing it. Okay. Do you think that's real, Peter, with the lack of staff at town hall? Well, you gotta, you gotta aim high, George. Um, yes, there are certain limitations with all of these recommendations that you know, many, may, many may never get implemented, but unless we put them down uh, in well, the document. That's what I mean about the sidewalk maintenance program. Uh, we right. have no follow through. Again, I've said to you many times in the past, you know, on my street, Clearfield Road, I have sidewalks below me here that have been uh, in gravel form, the, the, the sidewalk slabs. Whereas I maintain mine, my neighbor next door, but some of the people just do not. And uh, we have to have follow through and that means staffing. And yes. uh, I don't see it and I don't see it happening soon. In fact, I've even been thinking how do you, how you get around it having sidewalks uh, and you're saying, what do I mean by that? Why not use the modern uh, construction techniques of a roadway, which are maintained every 30 something years and they are in the winter time plowed and the next day they're completely clear with the chemicals. And uh, all you gotta do is have that white line down the roadway and one side for the bicycle, bicycle and uh, pedestrians and in fact, I notice more and more people walking on the street because uh, many of our town sidewalks, and that's not all Weathersfield, because I walk that quite a bit too, that uh, there are, our sidewalks are just not in good shape. The, and, not, and I'm not even talking about the trips. I think sidewalk concrete construction with the slabs is archaic, whereas paving a so, street. George, I'm sorry if I don't, if you don't mind my interrupting you. I, yeah, I no, think you came ahead. in late to the meeting. And we I know covered... I am. And I'm sorry I didn't see the first part of this either. Right. Oh, so, did. the first part covered talking about the maintenance program and educating it um, and, and whose responsibility it is. I'm, I bring it up only because we have a lot of stuff to get through tonight. Um, and it's really just, we talked about it under the evaluation and um, putting okay, that responsibility if you talked about on. It, fine. I'll drop the subject. Okay, thanks. You're your, your, your point was made earlier. It's in, it's in one of the recommendations. It's, we, could, we could spend all night just talking about um, sidewalks. So that's the topic for another, another time. Okay, fine. Thanks, yep, thanks. Uh, number five, educate motorists about uh, sharing the road with cyclists. Um, uh, obviously the police department uh, would be the lead. Um, Bike Walk Weathersfield could play a role in that, the Bike Pedestrian Advisory uh, Committee as well. So there should be Peter, other- Peter, this other is stakeholders. Anne. Yep. Could Watch from ECT be involved in that one as well? Sure. As a resource? Yep. We should throw in the Department of Motor Vehicle. It should be part of your license requirements. Well, they may have a, another, I mean, it's a good point that maybe we need to talk to them about what they do have, uh, if they do have an educational uh, program that the police department could take advantage of and not have to reinvent the wheel. Obviously, reaching out to the entire population about that is, you know, quite challenging. People clearly should know about sharing the road, but nevertheless, um, um, so, I, so that's why I have it as a B, a B recommendation. Uh, it, it, that would be quite, quite a project uh, and, and challenging. Uh, to cover, but nevertheless, should certainly be one of our policies. I'll check with Bike Walk Connecticut on that. They uh, several years ago were looking at trying to get uh, curriculum infused in the driver ed program with DMV. Okay, uh, I'll see what they what they have going. Okay, great. There's also an opportunity for the um, the driver training schools because we have like the fleet comes out of the Keeney Center every day. 
and 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 I, I I did a couple of classes in South Windsor, where you we went to the driver training to the classes and just did an hour of share the road stuff. But I wonder whether we could leverage like their use of the parking lot with letting somebody go in there and, and train. Oh, that's just individual drivings. But those companies, I think, that have the classes, I think you can get into. Okay. Some, of, that, some of those classes they do in adult ed at the high school. Yeah. So adult ed is, um, it's technically part of the school system, right? But it, they may, it, that might be a, uh, an additional partner that we yeah, I mean, should, yeah. should list. Okay. Um, all right, number six, provide educational materials and brochures about the dangers of speeding or other violations, especially in school areas, uh, community, community gathering locations, uh, churches, uh, et cetera. Um, once again, I had it as a B, um, doing this kind of community outreach on such a broad scale uh, is challenging, but nevertheless, uh, a worthwhile effort. Uh, the police department would obviously uh, be the lead agency on that with a number of other partners, including the schools, uh, the library, uh, town manager's office. Peter, is that something that could be made a C? It certainly could. Okay, um, last two on this page, send staff to bicycle uh, and pedestrian specific conferences, training opportunities we have uh, uh, already been doing that on, on, on several on several occasions, uh, and and thanks to our partner, the Connecticut Central Connecticut Health District, for for sponsoring some of those previous events. But once again, that should be an ongoing policy that we continue to uh, train uh, staff on uh, all of the relevant uh, bicycle and pedestrian uh, specific uh, matters. Uh, Town manager would be the lead to make sure his staff are doing that. And obviously the engineering department, physical services, the planning department uh, and others should be uh, involved in that. Uh, number eight, provide comprehensive pedestrian and bicycle safety training to police officers. Uh, I will speak with the police department as we uh, are going through these recommendations to just get a handle on where they are in some of these uh, areas. Uh, I can't really speak to whether uh, it is a uh, standardized part of a police officer's training, but I will certainly effort that and uh, get an understanding of that uh, to, to make sure that it's um, not already being done uh, and we should adjust the recommendation accordingly. But the police department would obviously be the lead in that. Uh, bike Walk Weathersfield, probably the bike and pedestrian advisory committee as well. Um, moving into the encouragement uh, uh, E, um, number one, support, host, and organize programs and events that encourage, so this is a broad category, just basically encouraging uh, events, uh, recognition, um, and things of that nature that support and encourage bicycle and walking. Uh, I had bike walk Weathersfield as a lead. It could easily be the bike and pedestrian uh, advisory uh, group as well. This is a broad category and pretty much all partners would be involved in implementing this particular recommendation. And we are doing many of these things already in terms of recognizing uh, bike month and walk and, and ride bikes to school days and those kinds of things. So. Don't forget the brisk winter walks in the meadows Sunday afternoon at one o'clock. That was a shame, Jim. That was a shameless plug. Uh, that, absolutely. Okay. <laughs> shameless. Yes. They are really interesting if you haven't been on one. Thank you. And I have the uh, Great Meadows Conservation Trust obviously as a partner. So you uh, here. So yep. uh, number two uh, and number three. Uh, so number two and three, seek uh, bike friendly designation and walk friendly community designation. Um, we, I believe um, we've talked about this. There are, I think, some things we need to accomplish first before we probably would be able to get uh, the designation there. So I put it as a B, 
because there are some things that I think we need to do uh, first in order to pursue that designation. Um, otherwise, I would have had it as an A. Uh, but as I look over the application and some of the communities that have received the designation, clearly they're, uh, they're quite a ways ahead of us in terms of their bike and pedestrian program. So, um, and this could e easily be a, a bike and pedestrian advisory committee as the lead, but I had Bike Walk Weathersfield uh, as the lead. Um, and those, those specific things that we, you might need to do could be A's on the other lists. <clears throat> Yes, yes. This master plan being like number one, probably. <laughs> like, I think yeah. as soon as this is, this is passed. It's... Yes, definitely. Peter, yeah, can have... you make that a joint lead with uh, the, pedest the Bike Pedestrian Advisory Committee? Certainly, yep. An idea yep. for maybe coming up with some more C's is to put some of the, like two and three on this page as C's because it's not really on the, t I, I view this, the uh, whole ranking that we're doing is mostly how it, how it pertains to a town priority, town government. Certainly partners can be recognized and, and should be, um, but for the ones that Bike Walk Weathersfield or the advisory committee might be more the lead on, uh, you know, they can make it a higher priority if they want to, and I'm sure some of them will. Uh, so to the extent that uh, the whole prioritization might feel better to some people if there's some C's in there. I, I don't know what, what people think of that. I disagree, Kevin, because I think it's the overall plan and what takes pri what we think is priority for the overall plan, not just what the town responsibilities are. So I'm okay with leaving it the way it is. I can be okay with that. Okay. Uh, number four, encourage existing businesses and commercial property owners to provide safe, secure, weather protected parking for bicycles uh, whenever feasible. I had that. I mean, it's important, but it, I had it as a B because there are costs. There are, um, you know, uh, community outreach that would have to be done, uh, retrofitting of, um, you know, facilities, uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, something that should be. Uh, uh, clearly, um, potentially a program that would offer maybe discounted bike racks or whatever it might be to those businesses. So once again, they're, they're cost implications. So I, I put it down as a B. Peter, can you add the EDIC to that too, as a partner? Sure. Since it's a business um, commercial property owner thing, that's a good idea. Chamber of Commerce is in there too. So yeah, EDIC, is a, that's a good catch. Um, number five could potentially be part of facade improvement. It could be. That could be a recommendation uh, as well to Good you know adjust the facade uh, program to uh, include pedestrian and bicycle improvements or something like that. Okay. Uh, since it is an existing program, um, it would probably rate pretty highly. Uh, number five, prepare a policy brochure to provide information on the appropriate recommendations for preferred location and design of bicycle parking. So that kind of goes with number four. Potentially, we could even combine those as one uh, recommendation uh, and provide guidance to the businesses as to how best to do that rather than give them a bike rack and say, here you go, have at it, provide them with some guidance. Peter, wouldn't that also be included in the zoning ch regulation changes you're talking about? It ultimately would, but these are for existing, you know, we, the, the zoning changes would only give the planning and zoning commission the opportunity uh, to uh, regulate new development. Yep. So this, okay. this pertains to existing businesses. How do we, how do we go back and encourage business right. retroactive to retrofit? Right. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Yep. Yep. Uh, number six, encourage the police department to develop a culture about bike and pedestrian safety as an important public safety issue. I'm not saying that they do not. Uh, and as I said earlier, I'll, I'll be speaking to the police department about some of these recommendations. We may have to uh, adjust this language, but nevertheless, as a policy, let's um, make sure our police department uh, is uh, concerned about bike and pedestrian safety. And I'm sure they are, but uh, it's always good to have a policy that, that says that. 
Number seven, create quarterly press releases and a series of public services and public service announcements uh, on bicyclists and pedestrian safety to local media. Uh, we have some, we have uh, the excellent um, PSA on uh, a bicycle, bicyclists crashing into a pile of leaves within the gutter, but there clearly are other PSAs uh, subjects that we could be doing on a seasonal basis. Uh, there could be one about snow, uh, clearing your sidewalks. So uh, it's something to uh, think about um, doing that on a, on a regular basis on a, on a variety of topics. Should that be more of, um, instead of saying quarterly, say something like regularly, and maybe even add a social media component to that one? Because is it, I mean, who's the audience? Is it the town of Weathersfield or is it everybody outside of Weathersfield? Because if it's really mostly for, for our town, um, no one really covers our town, you know, <laughs> in the news. And really? so it's most, most people are getting their information from social media channels. So, so yeah, I think, I, but other than I, that, right. <laughs> yeah. So I, 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 yeah, I think press releases is not the appropriate, um, you know, appropriate term. So it should be a broader and it shouldn't, shouldn't maybe just be social media. It should be a, what other forms, you know, of information and that we distribute. It's not, um, and it's not really, this one is not really designed for the media to cover. It's really for us to get the word out to our residents. Um, so I, yeah, I think this, this one, the language could, could be improved. Maybe, maybe something like a, an awareness campaign or, you know, you know, something like that. Yep. Okay. Number eight publicize the town's program that allows uh, cyclists, pedestrians, and others to alert the Department of Public Services to any poor maintenance conditions uh, or hotspots for improvements such as potholes, damaged sidewalks, et cetera. We do have a, um, an online function where you can uh, submit, uh, in essence, a work order uh, for specific uh, in problem areas in town. So this is just a recommendation to improve the profile uh, of where that is on the town website and, and uh, make more people aware uh, of how to, how to do that. And the lead agency would be the public services, uh, physical services department, uh, bike walk, Weathersfield town engineer uh, would have a role in that as well. And, and the my, bike pedestrian advisory council. Yep. Yeah. And my understanding is that for people who do use it, uh, they um, have uh, testified that uh, it works and the improvements are uh, regularly followed up on. So it is a system, it's in place, it's an existing program. So it rates, rates high, uh, just a matter of uh, seeing if we can raise the profile of it. So more people are aware uh, of its availability. Number nine, establish an annual budget appropriation specifically designated for bicycle and pedestrian improvements. We do have numerous uh, budget line items uh, that in, certain ways relate to bike and pedestrian improvements, more the pedestrian improvements than the bike improvements. Um, but this is recommending that uh, going forward, we try and have a specific uh, budget allocation that's designed for bicycle and pedestrian improvements. Um, so that would be a new initiative. Therefore, uh, it drops down to a B category. It also has cost implications. There, once again, a, a potential barrier as well. So we've knocked it down to the uh, B category. Lead agency would obviously be the town council. With with the town meeting. And add the BPAC. Yep. In other words, in, Peter, in lieu of uh, it being in the road budget and pavement program for roads and uh, sidewalk stuff coming out of that maybe you know that kind of thing right now yes you want to separate it out yes and i think yep. it's a good idea mm. so the idea going forward is if once with this this plan is in place there's going to be a series of projects uh and unless uh, there is a conversation about uh, how we implement them and having a uh, budget source for them i mean the budget could simply be you know matching funds for grants that we might get but you know uh, let's make sure it's earmarked specifically um, for these projects rather right. than getting combined with, this, with, with, with the staff person, if a uh, half staff person or whatever it is that could be. goes with it. Right. Yep. Okay. 
move on. Uh, continuing in the encouragement category, number 10, uh, this is a, a Heritage Commission recommendation, highlight uh, biking and walking pedestrian activities and all tourist promotional materials. Uh, we, uh, we have, uh, as, as many of you have uh, in, indicated and observed, uh, a lot of walking and a lot of biking going on this past year during the pandemic. Uh, it's clearly uh, one of the strengths of the community. So let's take advantage of that and use that to promote Weathersfield as a great place to visit, uh, to walk around, uh, to cycle uh, and enjoy uh, all that the town has to offer. So let's just make sure that uh, that's uh, recognized as we promote the community to the uh, outside world. Hey, Peter, this is Ann. Do the, do the realtors use that those kind of materials? Because I feel like that would be something that the realtors, it would be good for them to use as well to highlight um, when they're selling homes. Um, I can't, I don't know if they use you know, uh, walking and biking community in that, I would think, uh, you know, a walkable community is, um, is a great really? thing to promote. I just can't speak to uh, if, they, if they actually have promo materials that, that say that. I, I certainly don't want to talk about Sponsor creating those, fun yeah. creating those materials as well. Right. It couldn't hurt to reach out to realtors, but I, I think some of that is happening already. If you uh, looked at Zillow recently, which I just started to do, um, uh, it seemed like most of the uh, entries or whatever you call them, postings, uh, have something in there for a walking score for every one of them. And very often uh, uh, biking trails or hiking trails is uh, included in uh, the description of the amenities available. So that, that stuff is surprisingly high on uh, on a realtor's radar, I think. Yeah. And Peter, we have a realtor on the Heritage Commission, so we can follow up on that pretty easily. We have one on the EDIC as well, so we can mm -hmm. uh, just make a few call phone calls and just understand that a little bit better. Yep. Uh, number 11, assist businesses in applying for the League of American Bicyclists Bicycle Friendly Business designation. I think, um, I mean, that goes down to a B because we're not quite quite there yet as a community, uh, but nevertheless, there is a designation for businesses uh, rather than just communities uh, to get that, um, get that designation. So it's something uh, we can research and then uh, assist. Uh, so that's probably a, a, rather than a bike walk weather shield, a, a, you know, bike and pedestrian advisory committee um, as well can as- Can we make it a C? I don't know, can we? <laughs> yep. Okay, see it is. Uh, number 12, and we've done this uh, to a certain extent, but uh, create a bicycle map for distribution in print and electronically for download to popular bicyclist town, local ad advocacy groups such as Map My Ride, GPS and mobile applications. So we did, we did that um, based on what we have in place now for the AARP grant. So it's an existing program. So it's low hanging fruit. So it rises to, a, to an A. And as we uh, expand uh, our facilities in town, obviously we would adjust the map accordingly. Yep. Uh, number 13, designate a staff person uh, to initiate the actions necessary to fulfill the vision goals and recommendations of the bike and pedestrian plan. So clearly uh, as we go forward, there needs to be somebody uh, who is going to be the uh, champion for making sure um, these recommendations uh, are in place. And ultimately that's a town manager decision as to who he designates to do that and potentially with some town council uh, involvement in, in that decision. Number 14. Um, Just curious on that one, why it didn't get knocked down to a B because that's, I would think that'd be almost laughable from a funding standing standpoint. I think you're right, Kevin. It, it doesn't necessarily have to be a new position. Yeah, um, that's just loading it on to some poor guy, so. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that would be Peter and Ann yeah. well, and he's Derek. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe it's a, maybe it's a team. I'm with you on Peter. Yeah. Yes, there you go. There you go. You second that motion. Um, so, yeah, it's, 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 I don't know. This would not be a, a new position and it wouldn't be a, you know, person dedicated just to this purpose, it would be, yes, un unfortunately, somebody who uh, 
is designated as the staff person and has to work with the you know the bike and pedestrian advisory committee so that's the uh, idea with this this recommendation not a not a, a new full-time person so i don't know if that changes the conversation about whether it still should be an a or it should be a b but you in order for these things to go forward somebody has to it has to be on somebody's desk uh, agree a uh okay. and, you know the point person at the bpac at the very least sure yeah yep. okay uh 14 um just a, a policy that you know the existing organizations such as the historical society great meadows trust so here we should add for 14 because the um web dean stevens yep. also offers um so there's where the web dean stevens should be uh, added as a uh as a partner um they're mm -hmm. excellent walking tours uh so yes. at mary walking in history and you need the what's the congregational church cemetery association oh the um uh first uh something society first school society, first school society yeah. yeah i don't know however that they run the tours i think um the historical society does historical society yeah okay all right so that's fine okay uh use the bike and pedestrian master plan during project and development review for opportunities to implement the recommendations. So as we have a plan, if there is a development such as the Borden and the plan recommends certain things nearby, uh, we can use the uh, master plan to potentially uh, have those implemented uh, on the private level um, rather than relying on the public uh, uh, documents. So that is oftentimes how you can also get some, some of these recommendations implemented. So the Planning and Zoning Commission would clearly be the lead agency on that just to make sure that they're having those conversations during the development review process. The, um, the town engineer and the planning department would obviously be partners in that. Um, I, I pulled this out uh, specifically from some of the other events. Number 16 is to support the annual uh, bike festival event. Uh, that is a specific event uh, for uh, biking. So I wanted to make sure it had a, had a higher profile than some of the others that are uh, not necessarily bike related. So once again, just a policy to continue to or support the annual bike festival event. Um, and that probably should be the uh, bike and pedestrian uh, advisory committee taking the lead with bike walk Weathersfield. Um, and I think that's an event that the uh, high school uh, bicycle club uh, yep. is specifically. So that's another one that the uh, high school bike club should be uh, named there. Yeah, it's it basically starts through the club and we go through the school system too. So if mentioning this, the school system might yeah. might help. It's okay. kind of under the aegis of the school. But yeah, Tom, thank Tom, you for what, including it. Sure, Tom, what support do you presently get from uh, other partners other than the school system and your and your bike club? I mean, the main, the main, the main support is to uh, basically have somebody to kind of like of officialize it, if that's a word, <laughs> is to make it a part of an actual town thing. So we're under the bike club, which is under the high school, which is under the school system, and then having them support that as a school event, so that we're you know kind of covered within the community of the school doing things. Okay. Um, and then, you know, Kevin uh, and, and Rob have come out with, with Bike Walk Weathersfield. But a lot of it is just, you know, people, people coming to the event. And, uh, you know, Bike Walk Connecticut has come before, but it, those are mostly just setting up their tents. Uh, Jim has been there before, which is great. Um, you know, the, uh, what is it, Watch For Me? Not Watch For Me, the... Uh, be aware of me the the one with uh, for for seeing people while you're out there um that program was also there uh i keep saying it the wrong way i apologize okay um, but i i do appreciate you putting that on there specifically no problem no problem okay uh, number 17 uh expand the um this is the health district expand the low-cost bicycle helmet program to include reflective materials and personal lights for evening uh, walking and cycling I don't know if Ann, if you had any thoughts about that, but uh, we have a, 
uh, low cost um, bicycle helmet program through the Central Connecticut uh, Health District. So this recommendation is to expand that further as uh, we become more bike and walk friendly. I think that's a great. Definitely idea. look into that. I talked to the Bike Walk Wethersfield folks to see what, you know, to figure out what would be the best items to have and, and talk to our minister of the helmets to make sure we have space and all that stuff. But yeah, if, if, if that's something that we need to have more of at inexpensive, we can try to, we will definitely look into that. Robin, okay. Kevin, will you help guide me on that? Certainly. <laughs> okay, number 10, I'm sorry, number 18. Uh, I didn't want to go backwards. So number 18, uh, create a public parking map to identify public parking and bicycle parking in Old Weathersfield. Uh, we do, uh, or we are developing a, uh, a parking map for Old Weathersfield. Uh, so this recommendation, a little bit of a twist, is to uh, consider adding where uh, not, not only vehicle parking is, but where bike parking is in Old Weathersfield. Peter, would that be uh, detailed enough so you could say there's four parking spaces here and that kind of thing or um phil loman is working on it it wouldn't it doesn't get into that level it identifies the larger uh off street parking lots you know the keeney first mm -hmm. church you know some of the other uh public uh, locations it doesn't get into individual we do have a, a we did a parking study recently which has that level of detail um uh, but it wouldn't be a public that's not a public map. Um, so this is really more of a illustrative map. Hey Rob, do you know whether you, once we've add, since we added bike parking, can we get that added to Google Maps? Cause Google Maps will show car parking, you know, on them, but do they show bike parking? I don't know, they do like I, on our, on the map that I've done that has all like the, the, the map uh, you built for the bike facility. or path. Yeah. yeah, some of those I, I might put I put some of the bike racks on there just myself, like into the Google Maps. But like uh, okay. I know Tom Tom had um the repair station, like Google officially put that on our on the map. So if you look at look at the, the library oh. town hall, it shows up as a repair station. I think that they they Tom you can probably speak how you did it, but like I know like if you send something to them. They'll add things like that, but racks, I don't know they'll do. But oh. we could, we, could, we do have like our, our own homemade map version with that in there. Right. Yeah, I did that for the one at the town hall and the one at Maxwell Park, mm -hmm. uh, which is right on the town edge. Uh, it, I didn't have to contact anybody. I just kind of put it in and it, it seemed to take. I know yeah. one I had to do twice before it, it started showing up again. Uh, but yeah, it's it's fairly easy to do. Uh, moving on to enforcement. Number one, target enforcement efforts and police presence at identified intersections and streets where speeding uh, or driving behaviors have been uh, identified in response to neighborhood concerns. So number one and number six probably could be merged. Number six is establish a neighborhood traffic calming program to be responsive to concerns from residents and property owners regarding traffic speed and volume, safety, and the quality of life within residential neighborhoods. There are communities that specifically have uh, traffic calming uh, programs where you can submit uh, your concerns and there's a committee that would review them and come up with some recommendations on what they can do to uh, you know, calm traffic in, the, in that particular location. Um, I had the number six as a B because it's a new program. We'll take some organization to get in place, but nevertheless, if it's merged with number one, you know, maybe it is, maybe it is an A. Um, so we did get a, we do have a list, as I said earlier, from the uh, surveys as to streets that uh, residents um, feel uh, are uh, particular areas where speeding is, um, is very high. Um, so we, we, we would have that list uh, included in the, in the recommendations. Um, Peter, this is Tom Brown. Yep. I'm wondering if um, we could add something into this section regarding bike theft uh, in terms of when the police recover something, it could be relatively low cost for them to just post whenever 
stolen bikes are recovered. Uh, and I think that there's kind of a missing section there. Sometimes they do recover a stolen bike and it ends up just being auctioned off or donated. So people, uh, I, I know that they do have a lot of them that come in and they do end up getting donated, which is great. But to kind of uh, close that circle, I don't know if we could look at that in terms of enforcement or if that would go into evaluation, but whatever, wherever, but okay. just thinking of it now because uh, bike, bike theft has been off the hook across the country since the pandemic. And I mean, the bold and brazenness of some of the thefts is incredible. The other one uh, that you're on that subject is situations where bikes basically get abandoned at bike parking locations where somebody either forgets it or uh, there's been, there was one at town hall literally for a month. Uh, it was it was chained up to the bike rack, but it just sat there, um, you know, uh, unad unadopted, orphaned. Um, so maybe that's also uh, a related uh, recommendation. No, as that's, to, uh, that's that's good. If you could enclose that into one, that'd be great. Yep. Okay. And there was one at on on um, the Broad Street Green for a long time. I think uh, Rob had uh, you know tweeted or put something out there for somebody to come and uh, uh, get their bike back. So it was missing uh, yeah. a wheel, wasn't it? That was the one that was missing a wheel. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. it was locked up nice, but just no wheel. Yeah. Right. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, number two, assign a police officer to coordinate all bicycle and pedestrian safety enforcement and street improvement activity and to work with the bicycle and pedestrian uh, commission. So as, as that, as that committee goes forward, clearly we should have uh, a police uh, department official uh, as a liaison to work. Uh, I, I assume uh, there is somebody in the police department who's maybe if it's our traffic officer, but I, I should never assume anything. So when I, when I do meet with uh, the police department, I will have that on the agenda as well to understand that. So don't you also want the BPAC listed as a partner? Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Number three, establish enforcement efforts that are related to cycling and pedestrian infractions. So that's kind of related to maybe number two, potentially we could uh, merge those uh, into one. Um, you know, one's an A, one's a B, um, but they are uh, very closely related. Number four, an emphasis should be placed on citing those who park on sidewalks as this violation often deters individuals from walking. Uh, I believe we do have an ordinance uh, on that. So it's just, once again, a uh, policy statement that uh, more, more focus uh, should be placed uh, when, that, uh, when that occurs. Strong, use the word stronger enforcement or something, or yeah. Okay. That, All right. Let's enhance it a little. Yep, yeah, okay. Seems like that would be on somebody would report it like an like an uh, an, uh, an obstruction, and then instead of filling a pothole, they knock on the door and tell them to get that thing the heck off the uh, sidewalk or something like that. I I complained about the uh, parking up the street from you on Mill Street uh, at the apartments there with the town cops quite a bit, and they say, well, you got it's very difficult. A lot of complaints and they don't respond. The parking still goes on out there. And I think that's a dangerous, that part of Mill Street is very dangerous for that reason. Oh, it, with the apartments of, yeah, I see what at you're the saying. the other end from you, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like they need uh, off, off, uh, move the sidewalk back and make, make a, a parking area, parking on, uh, you know, like on the green where you can pull off and park. Uh, Probably, but the, the what the, the mill needs to be wide enough there, and that parking doesn't allow it. And I go through right. there a lot. But uh, yeah, okay. Anyway. I'll keep keep that in mind when we talk about uh, at the next meeting about the specific uh, recommendations. I made a note of it, but let's make sure that gets uh, incorporated at some point. Uh, number five. Enforce strict compliance with ordinances prohibiting projections or encumbrance. That's that's that could go back to that previous uh, group recommendation. So uh, that's almost a duplicate. So that could be um, combined with some of our earlier conversations. 
Yep. All right. And then, as I said, lastly, uh, create a, a neighborhood traffic calming program so that there is a uh, process and a group of people who review the complaints and potentially come up with um, recommendations. And obviously the police department, the town engineer, maybe the planning department, uh, physical services are all uh, at the table. Uh, equity. Wait a minute uh, on that last one, Peter. You think that there needs to be a citizen advisory committee? Kind of thing? No, it wouldn't be a citizen. It would be a staff level, um, a staff level uh, committee program uh, that would review neighborhood complaints where they're claiming that there is uh, either high volumes or high speed or unsafe uh, situations on that street. And uh, this group, police department, uh, the engineering department, planning department, and the physical services department would um, study that particular complaint and potentially come up with recommendations. Um, there could be a host of solutions, but they would come up with potential recommendations and decide if um, they need to be implemented. Maybe Peter, PTAs five. could be used as points of contact. I'm sorry, Kevin, did you say that again? Uh, sorry if I cut somebody off. Maybe PTAs could be used as points of contact uh, as a uh, in lieu of neighborhoods. Um, it could be if it's a school, if it's a school uh, specific, but um, uh, yeah, I don't know if I would get that specific as to the PTAs, but um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we don't have neighborhood associations, so to speak, here in town, like some communities do. But um, yeah, it could be an individual. It could be, um, you know, group of residents. But Peter, okay. number five. Oh. Could you go back there a second? Number five. I know that it's a encumbrance on people walking and biking, particularly walking. Could we somehow have the word vegetation in there? because some people have such bushes that protrude at least a third of the way into the sidewalk. And that is a real problem. Whereas when you say projections or encumbrances, they're probably thinking of something besides vegetation. Yes, I think the, that term is used in the previous recommendation. So the idea here would be to merge this one with some of those earlier ones, which does refer to trees and vegetation and um, other, other okay. things. Thank you. Yes. Okay, uh, equity, we're moving on to equity. Um, number one, evaluate the location of all Connecticut transit bus stops uh, as it relates to shelter, uh, safety, crosswalks, connections to other sidewalks and spaces for buses to safely pull off the road to pick up and drop off riders. Uh, we recently um, went through a process with Connecticut transit to get some of the bus shelters primarily on the Silas Dean Highway installed, but we did not look at uh, other locations uh, in the community. So this is a broader recommendation just to take a further look uh, at that and then see if there are improvements necessary to make our, our bus stops um, as safe uh, as we can, can make them. So the Greater Hartford Transit District's involved in this one. Uh, the Planning and Economic Development Department, uh, town engineer uh, as well. Uh, number two, uh, and, and there's costs associated with this, so we, we put it in the B category. Uh, and there are other uh, organizations outside of the town that are involved, which is another barrier. Uh, number two, ensure that bus route maps and schedules are readily available uh, in multiple languages for potential riders. It's kind of beyond our ability to enforce, so we have the, the Hartford the Greater Hartford Transit District as the uh, lead. Um, and we've got our social services department. Uh, this could also be one where WEC, uh, WEC is involved. They were mentioned uh, earlier. Uh, they um, have numerous programs. So that clearly could be something we could talk uh, to them about being involved in. Number three, uh, uh, evaluate uh, the connectivity of pedestrian and bicycle infrastructure to all low moderate income housing developments. Uh, clearly, that's a very important um, uh, task, and um, I, I'm not sure why I have the Planning and Economic Development Department as the lead, but nevertheless, um, um, so uh, at our next meeting, when we start talking about uh, individual bike routes, we just need to be mindful uh, that we are not uh, excluding areas 
uh, of the community and that we are factoring in where some of these housing developments actually are uh, because many uh, of those residents have don't have all the choices um, that other people have in terms of their modes of transportation. Peter, you should add the BPAC on that. Okay. Um, Number four, yeah. oh, did I hear somebody comment? Okay, uh, implement projects from our ADA transition plan. Uh, for those of you who uh, weren't around, we, we did identify um, uh, where there are areas where handi handicapped accessibility uh, problems existed. So we're recommending that uh, we pay particular attention to that plan, uh, particularly infrastructure improvements where non-compliant ADA curb ramps, sidewalks and crosswalks exist. Uh, we've got the town engineer uh, as the lead. I think we are, um, town engineer would, would be our, our ADA transition uh, staff person. So clearly uh, he would be involved. The Weathersfield Advisory Committee for Persons with Disabilities would obviously wanna also play a role in that, I would also probably add our bike pedestrian uh, advisory group uh, as well as maybe um, some others. Um, uh, I had that as a B, not as, um, because it's not important, but once again, there are potentially significant cost ramifications for making all of these improvements. So that's why uh, we had it as a B. And then uh, lastly, in terms of equity, uh, when we develop the plan, we just need to make sure that there are uh, bicycle and pedestrian facilities uh, geographically distributed through all parts of the community so that uh, as many residents as possible can uh, benefit from uh, these improvements. Uh, I think this is the last grouping. Uh, this is, um, we'll try and get through these and get through this tonight here. Uh, engineering recommendations. Um, once again, uh, we talked a little bit about this earlier and maybe this could be combined with one of the earliest recommendations, but um, integrate complete streets infrastructure and design features into street design and construction. Uh, obviously our town engineer is the primary lead for that as he is uh, the one in most cases initiating new uh, infrastructure and street improvement projects. Uh, and we have a number of other players who would partner uh, in that. Uh, it's a B because there are obviously cost ramifications to that, not because it's uh, not important, but uh, the cost factors uh, impact that recommendation. Uh, number two, implement the bike and pedestrian network as identified in the bicycle and pedestrian plan. That's uh, kind of an obvious one, but nevertheless, uh, needs to be said that we need to uh, implement these recommendations. Once again, there are significant costs or there will be significant costs. So it, it falls down to a B and that would be overseen uh, by the bike and pedestrian advisory committee. Uh, number three, continue to up, update pedestrian and bicycle signage and markings to current standards. We do have some signage in the community uh, that is uh, in need of upgrades. So uh, we're making, making that uh, recommendation uh, once again, the Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee could be the lead on that. Uh, number four, install additional public bike maintenance stations. As was mentioned earlier, we have one at Town Hall. Uh, so it's a, a recommendation that we continue to think about that and identify locations where we could install additional uh, facilities where there are uh, heavier uh, volumes of uh, uh, bicycle ridership. Uh, install bicycle and pedestrian wayfinding signage. We have started to do Peter, that. I have a, I'm sorry, this is Ann. Sure. On, on that one, yep. um, I'm thinking, can that one, even though it maybe doesn't rise to it, be an A, just because I'm afraid of that funding source of drying up? Uh, um, and which one are we, four or five? I'm sorry, one? in the, in the uh, additional public bike maintenance stations. Okay. And Peter, on items two through five, I notice you don't have Bike Walk Weathersfield, but they've been an active part of some of that already. So don't you want to include them there? Yes, we do. Okay. Uh, number five, we talk about wayfinding signage. Um, 
we have started to do that. Um, but as we go forward with these uh, recommendations, uh, it would be uh, beneficial for all if there was a comprehensive wayfinding signage program for uh, primarily the bicycle uh, recommendations, but also potential, potentially pedestrians. Um, once again, there are costs with that, so it dropped down to a B, but nevertheless, um, number six, uh, inspect and restripe bicycle and pedestrian facilities annually. Uh, we do that. Um, we do that now. It's an existing existing program. There are obviously costs associated with that, but since it's an existing program, we rated it as an A, and that is uh, primarily under the authority of the town uh, engineer. Uh, we do that under a contract basis annually. Number seven, um, conduct a comprehensive sidewalk conditions inventory and survey. Uh, we do not have such uh, a document. Uh, we are talking potentially about the next time we do our road, road audit is adding this to that, um, that study. Uh, the, there are costs implications, but it would be a wonderful uh, resource to have to document the conditions of sidewalks throughout the community. Uh, lead would be the town engineer that falls under his jurisdiction, but also um, physical services needs to be involved in that. Uh, and then the bike and pedestrian advisory committee as well. It's a B because there are costs. Number eight, create and fund a sidewalk gap program. Somebody had mentioned that uh, earlier, we do not have such a program, um, that would be a town council decision, town manager and the town engineer would be involved in that. Uh, obviously there are costs and potentially significant costs with doing something like that, um, but it's a recommendation. It falls to a B because of the cost uh, factor, but it's important that we have that recommendation in there to close the gaps. We did, it, we did document where those gaps exist, so we will have a specific list in the plan as to where those where those conditions are. Number nine, uh, re-examine the Heritage Way bike trail to implement enhancements, including drainage, surface treatment, signage, et cetera. Uh, once again, uh, costs involved in doing that, but so falls to a B, but we had many comments during some of the surveys uh, and at, at our meetings that there are stretches of the Heritage Way bike trail that need uh, improvement. Um, so we want to make sure that's a specific recommendation. Uh, the Bike Pedestrian Advisory Committee could be the lead on that. Obviously, with the town engineer, physical services, some of this could be done in-house with our physical services department. Uh, that's why we've got them identified as a partner. And don't forget Bike Walk Weathersfield. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Kevin and Rob, I keep throwing you under the bus. Thanks. All right, number 10, continue to incorporate the reconstruction of non-compliant curb ramps and sidewalks into town infrastructure projects. Once again, that's simply a complete streets policy uh, uh, recommendation, but nevertheless, I think it's important uh, that we say that um, so that as we go forward on future road reconstruction projects, we try and incorporate uh, other improvements into that when it's uh, practicable. Uh, that's an A. Uh, because it's an existing program that we have, uh, and then the town engineer would be the lead on that. Uh, number 11, this is maybe where we can uh, throw Rocky Hill and the city of Hartford uh, as, um, as partners here, uh, work with neighboring communities to establish a trail system along the Connecticut River and through the meadows. So this is the recommendation that we work to try and connect uh, with uh, Riverfront Recaptures system. Uh, along the Connecticut River in some logical way. Uh, we have clearly have some barriers to really making a, a smooth connection uh, to, to that system, but nevertheless, this is that recommendation. Uh, obviously, it's, that could be costly. Uh, that's why it fell to a B, but nevertheless, this is that particular recommendation. And obviously there are several players involved in that. Is this the right place to put Glastonbury in there since the bridge uh, and so forth and so on? Mm -hmm. uh, it certainly could. So Glastonbury, Hartford, and Rocky Hill. Good idea, Jim. Yeah. Okay. Uh, number 12. Yeah. Yes. 
and this is Anne. Could it is it possible that uh, Rocky Hill could be involved in number five as well in terms of wayfinding signage, just looking to our community, our connected towns for that as well? So I would probably, um, since you bring that up, we would probably uh, re re uh, reword that uh, to include, you know, something about connectivity to adjoining communities or something um, like that. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, Peter, is there a reason why this this is a um, a specific project and uh, you know, I thought you'd indicated we get to projects in the future. We're not going to say that this is a specific project because I'd almost like to see a wish list rather than saying this is an A or this is a B, that these are projects we'd like to see happen. And, you know, I just wonder why 11 is in this category since it's the only one that really involves like a specific kind of trail improvement. Are you saying these should be prioritized? One, two, three, four, so forth? Well, I'm just saying that that's what I thought that, that, that we weren't really gonna get too much into the weeds just yet on this kind of thing. This one is such a big project and, you know, uh, commented on by many, many, many people and something that's already documented in other plans that I felt it kind of warranted becoming a policy um, statement rather than, um, obviously it is a specific project, but it's such a big one uh, from a policy point of view that I thought it warranted, um, you know, being in the engineering uh, category as as we go forward. It certainly uh, needs to also be in the specific list that we're going to discuss at the next meeting, but um, it's so huge and I think so important uh, in terms of connectivity that it, it at least I felt, you know, I, I, you could convince me otherwise and we could just drop it out of here, but um, I just, you know, it, I think it needed, needs to be said that as a policy, we want to make sure uh, we are uh, pursuing this. Uh, I agree. I just don't like seeing a B next to it, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah. As I say, the cost was the, was the reason it dropped to a B. Uh, you could even argue because of the cost, it could drop to a C, but um, it's certainly, uh, so we could probably talk about that, how we, uh, when we have the list of projects, uh, how we, how we rack and rack and stack them. So, okay. Um, and then lastly, I think this might be, uh, I don't know, I shouldn't say that. Uh, number 12, uh, install bicycle parking and other bicycle storage at all existing public buildings, schools, facilities, uh, and high density multifamily residential developments. So we've started uh, to do that. Um, this could probably be an A because the costs of the, uh, uh, the, the bike racks are not that uh, significant. Um, and we have uh, very recently been able to install a, a big number of them at some of these locations. So I, I, I could see this being changed uh, to an A, but nevertheless, we wanted to have a uh, recommendation that we make sure we are installing um, bike parking and, and associated uh, facilities at all of these locations. Can we also um, just make a note on that one towards the enforcement, uh, just as the we make the police aware of all the major parking areas for bikes, especially if there's an apartment building or something where they're going to be overnight. Okay, so that might go in an uh, enforcement category. Okay, uh, these may be the last two um, recommendations here and uh, we can let you guys get on with the rest of your night here. Uh, uh, in terms of engineering, um, number 13, uh, uh, create a tree planting program for all major street, street corridors. Um, this, this is not a, a specific bike or pedestrian uh, recommendation. It's more of a pedestrian recommendation, quite frankly, that um, you know it's uh, much more appealing for pedestrians uh, to be able to walk on streets uh, that have that uh, that feeling and also have shade provided for pedestrians. We do not have a uh, tree planting program uh, here in the community. Uh, so this would be a new initiative uh, and would cost some money to do that analysis. But nevertheless, uh, it was something that had been commented on numerous times during the survey 
and it warranted being included uh, as a recommendation. And then related to that is to expand um, town funding uh, for our tree planting program. Right now, that program uh, is a very has a very paltry amount annually dedicated to it, and uh, should be uh, expanded. Um, obviously, if we end up having a, a tree planting program uh, or plan, uh, there should be the resources to to fund that. And that's a town council decision. That's why they're the lead uh, on that. Uh, the lead on doing the plan would be the physical services department, as the tree warden works uh, in that department. A lot of towns have matching programs or, you know, things like that. And uh, <clears throat> uh, urban tree, urban forestry is a big, uh, a big uh, field these days yeah. and uh, can be, uh, could be part of that kind of a program. Definitely. definitely. And P Peter, can we combine those two into one? Yes, I think so. That's why they're, I was saying they're related. So yeah. you know, create a, uh, community tree planting, you know, plan and program and provide adequate annual funding to do that. Mm -hmm. Peter, okay. I, I don't know if you're, uh, I just thought of something that, that was, uh, I was going to bring up before and I forgot it, but um, when we were riding our bikes in Glastonbury, the pedestrians were very, very good about stepping aside and giving, you know, making way if you're coming by. Whereas in Weathersfield, my wife was riding down the street and somebody yelled at her for riding a bicycle on a sidewalk. So it seems to me that's an education program if in fact sidewalks are for bicyclists and pedestrians, especially on- not. Well, they should be on certain well, streets they, where, where you don't have, where, where the traffic uh, pattern doesn't allow. It. And that's what I'm, you know, I, so that's an even more difficult pedest uh, uh, education program, but um, I mean, and you want little kids to be on the sidewalk anyway, but uh, <clears throat> on a really busy street that has narrow uh, places to bicycle, uh, you want to have that option. Sure, sure. Rob, can you address that? I'm going to arrest your wife next time I see her. No, I can't. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, 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 it's a, it's a definitely, there's definitely a safety factor in it, but I mean, legally, you know, the, you're not supposed to ride a bike on the, on the, on the sidewalk. Some, some places like cities will have like a 12 and under age waiver that you can do it, or you can, you know, walk your bike on the street, on the sidewalk rather. But there are times where, I mean, I will even, I mean, I come, I, when I bike to work over by Hartford hospital, if there's a, if there's a line of traffic, I, I hop on the sidewalk for like my own safety and, but it, but there are there there are a lot more it's a lot more dangerous to be up on the sidewalk with your bike for people pulling out of their driveways and just kind of like not knowing what you're going to do so it's 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 one of those hard things to to do but I mean, I've I've gotten yelled at the opposite thing riding the street to get to yell the people yell at you get up on the sidewalk get out of the street but what can you do yeah well. <clears throat> Okay. All right. Um, just so I can try and get you guys uh, on your on your way tonight, um, not keep you here all night. Uh, our next meeting, uh, we will start talking about specific uh, improvements, recommendations. Um, I'm not sure we'll get as far as really nailing down the cost, but that is something that we will have to uh, start discussing. And then um, talking about timing, you know, which projects do we want to go forward with first? You know which are the, which are which are the most important. Maybe how we phase them, and then once again getting back to our prioritization of A, B, or C, so we can uh, have a uh, series of debates at the next meeting about um, about those individual projects. Uh, just to remind you, uh, this plan does require a community uh, involvement process before we will be finished here uh, with some public meetings, the Planning and Zoning Commission, uh, Town Council. Uh, a public, uh, public, an official public hearing, and then at the end of the process, the actual approval uh, of the plan by the Planning and Zoning Commission. So uh, there's still uh, much work to be done, and we will have to discuss how we advertise um, these public meetings uh, and uh, whether we end up having to do them virtually or whether at some point in the uh, foreseeable future uh, there will be public 
meetings or maybe a combination of virtual and public. Uh, we will we'll see how that uh, evolves over the next uh, you know six months or so. Um, I, don't, I don't know if Derek is still uh, hanging in there with us or not, but um, these are uh, some of the projects that are uh, still out there. Um, uh, we are going to gear up shortly and start finalizing the design of the community connectivity projects in Old Weathersfield. Um, uh, so that is hopefully going to gear up uh, sooner than later and get the final bid documents out the door so we can get those projects under construction. We're pretty much wrapped up with the AARP uh, grant. I still need to do the uh, stickers, um, but we are uh, very, uh, very much uh, completed with that, except for a few odds and ends. Uh, uh, Derek, um, if you're there, uh, the Woolcott Hill Road project, there is a public information session scheduled. Yeah, we have one scheduled next Thursday, the 21st at 6.30. It's gonna be a Zoom meeting. If you're interested in attending, just uh, send me an email with your name, address, and phone number, and I'll send you the Zoom link a couple of days ahead of the meeting. That's for, as we've talked about in the past, this is for reconstructing Wilco Hill Road from Jordan Lane North to uh, Victoria Road in Hartford. Mm -hmm. um, BHB is our consultant. They have developed preliminary design plans at this point and cost estimate, so they're going to present the plans. Um, just looking for feedback. Uh, we are looking at changing the cross section a bit where um, we're eliminating, there's two lanes in the northbound direction. We're gonna eliminate it, reduce it down to one and add bike lanes in both directions. Um, so there are some changes that we wanna get some feedback on. So if you're interested, just reach out to me by email or give me a call. Okay. Uh, the Highland Street. Uh, as far as Highland Street, yeah. Highland Street is substantially complete. We put in a couple of new crosswalks as part of the project, so we're still waiting for fabrication of the signs, but those should be installed soon. And there's a very little bit of uh, uh, pavement markings they need to do in some of the gore areas near um, Highland Street and Thorn Bush intersection. So it's almost, it's pretty much done. I mean, they will be back in the spring to do some restoration work and to touch up on curbing and other things, but generally the project's complete. Um, Hartford Avenue, we've talked about that's that's done. Stripings in um, Great Meadow Road uh, improvements is um, we need to do some surveying, get started on that. Uh, I think I had mentioned last time we talked about uh, had a couple of retirements, so my staff of five has been down to two, but I do have a couple of new uh, staff members starting in the next couple of weeks. We have a new construction manager and a new chief of surveys, so. Kind of excited to get them on board um, so we can start moving with some of these projects that kind of been hanging out there. Um, so that's one of the projects that will be on his list once he gets through some of the more um, priority projects. Uh, Putnam Bridge Trail. Uh, I don't know, Peter, do you, do you have any more information for what we discussed the other day? Uh, no, the, um, we, had a, we had a meeting with uh, Glastonbury and the DOT uh, and Weathersfield to discuss um, maintenance responsibilities. The state would like to have the communities be responsible for um, daily maintenance and some level of uh, longer term maintenance. So we're in the middle of a conversation about whether we can do that or not um, and how we would do that. Uh, I know there was some uh, comments or concerns that the project might uh, not be moving forward. Uh, we did receive an email today um, just indicating um, that as it currently sits, the project is scheduled to begin construction this summer and be completed over the course of two construction seasons. Um, so they'll keep us uh, in the loop if the construction start date uh, changes in any way. So that's the latest uh, on that project as of, as of today. Uh, the People for Bikes Community Grant Program, we met as a group and we took a harder look at the criteria and the projects that um, were potentially fundable um, and decided to uh, pass on that grant program uh, at this time so that we don't pursue a, a grant project that um, could potentially uh, be used later on down the road when we have the 
plan in place and we have specific projects that we would need funding for. So we didn't want to apply for something now and uh, it not really contribute to the uh, larger plan. So uh, we're going to pass. Uh, I think this grant uh, program comes out twice a year. So now we'll add it to our uh, list of funding sources and uh, at the appropriate time, come up with a project uh, and submit a, a, a probably a better grant uh, for for matching that program. Uh, <coughs> lastly, I got an email from, I think it was Bike Walk, Connecticut, uh, indicating that the DOT has a number of uh, highways in Connecticut where uh, primarily pedestrians and, and cyclists are not allowed, um, are banned from, you know, uh, walking and, and riding on the route uh, per uh, the DOT. Uh, so they have distributed that list and are asking communities um, if there are routes that they should uh, take another look at and see if, if they are in fact being used by pedestrians and are being used by cyclists and they should be opened up uh, for that purpose. So I haven't had a chance uh, to go through the list um, as to whether there are uh, roads in Wethersfield that we should be having a conversation about, but I'm in the process of doing that. I just wanted to uh, make you guys aware uh, the you state. See, the Berlin Turnpike's on there, and um, and it's it's a really hard list to read. Yes, to it, is. it is. It is. I was having to figure out exactly where they're talking about. So that's why I I really haven't had a chance to <laughs> dig my teeth into it. So, uh, but it is on my list of things to do. I'll take a look at it and see if there's local local impact and whether there's conversations. I am. Um, I, at, uh, at this point, uh, the Berlin Turnpike is not a uh, corridor that I would uh, encourage uh, cyclists uh, to uh, enjoy. Um, and there are no sidewalks uh, there now uh, either. So um, unless there were additional accommodations made there, I would probably not, not argue that they wanna take it off the list unless anyone else has some strong feelings about that. How about Prospect and Wells Road, considering the wide rights of way in both locations? I don't think that either one of those are on the list where you cannot ride your bike, but I am going to make sure uh, I understand uh, all of the um, roads in, in town that might have those restrictions, but I don't think those are on the list. No, I, I'd, I'd like to see them be considered or discussed or looked at at least because those rights away are huge in both of them. And uh, some places got the sidewalks as we know and some don't and, uh, and uh, for example, and uh, I think uh, they could be widened. They might uh, become bike roads. And they definitely are roads in town that have many sidewalk gaps. So clearly- right. oh, um, oh, yes. yes. I, you know, being retired as I am, as long as I am, Peter, and I'm walking a mile a day, I'm walking a lot of this town, and I see where we don't have sidewalks in a lot of locations and the difficulties in all of these places, so. Yep, thanks. Hey, Peter. Yes. This is Anne from uh, from that, that last one, the CTDOT list. I, I don't think this is strictly a, a Weathersfield issue, but from a equity standpoint, sidewalks along the Berlin Turnpike, I think would be important. There's a lot of people that are residing, whether we like to admit it or not, along the Berlin Turnpike that have a hard time getting safely to basic things like food um, without sidewalks. Um, so I, I feel like it's, it's an issue, but it's not just weather seals issue. So I don't really know what to do with that. But. Hey, uh, Peter. The big um, this, this is Ryan. I'm sorry, I've, I've been listening in, but uh, the last half hour or so, I've actually not been uh, able to just to validate your points about the Berlin Turnpike. Uh, there was just a four car accident um, due to someone that was in the street. And um, that's what I was just attending to for the last 20 or so minutes. So uh, it's very validated that Berlin Turnpike could definitely use um, some sort of sidewalk um, to assist with the pedestrians. Yeah. I mean, I see people walking on it every day. Uh, the other, and the other issue with the Berlin Turnpike is the Connecticut transit bus routes um, basically cross over rather than rather than you know drive along um, and, and stop on the Berlin Turnpike. So 
there's another issue there related, you know, to equity and accessibility up there. Uh, Derek, um, do you want to share uh, that the DOT, what the DOT is doing with the uh, synchronized um, traffic light system on the Berlin Turnpike? Yeah, DOT is uh, starting a project where they're doing integrated traffic signal project that's going to go uh, starting at the north end in Weathersfield near, near the um, the 5 and 15 interchange at Nostri and going all the way south, I think all the way down through Newington into Berlin, where they are uh, installing new equipment to better coordinate the traffic signals to improve traffic flow. So the signals are um, called smart signals where they will detect the amount of traffic flow and um, you know, change from red to green you know, for side streets, less if there's no vehicles there, it'll keep the main line open. Um, depending on the volume of traffic, it may hold greens longer than it would. It's not gonna be set on a fixed uh, time schedule like they are now. So this is, I think one of the first projects in the state that they're gonna be doing that with. Um, so that'll be you know, definitely a benefit for, for the town and just for the region. Um, to certainly improve the flow through there. So that is, I think they're just starting up that project at this point, so that'll be going on. I know as part of that, there are some signal upgrades as well that um, do involve some pedestrian improvements. We've pushed for crosswalks and pedestrian um, crossing signals. Uh, I know at one particular intersection, uh, Arrow Road and Berlin Turnpike, um, there was some pushback from DOT. I guess they've gotten away from that. I guess federally, there's been less of an interest in having actually pedestrian signals because of the fact that it does impact traffic flow quite a bit. So they've, uh, they're kind of following the federal guidelines where they, they, they don't put it in, but you're, you're given the okay to cross with the traffic that's running parallel to you on the green. Um, and at that particular intersection, we were just talking about safety, but you know, I had pushed the issue a couple of times and that seems to be where DOT's position is on that. So it doesn't come up very often as being a problem, but you know that's something we'll have to evaluate on a case-by-case -case basis when they come, come to us for new projects. Along those lines, I wondered if, if we couldn't highlight the potential state uh, property or state road related issues uh, as a recommendation somehow to uh, to highlight the interaction that's needed with DOT and potentially our legislators. I know that's potentially a spotty or a, uh, almost a secretive kind of communication, but um, things like the Berlin Turnpike, uh, we've talked about uh, DMV, uh, there are state facility, other state properties uh, that uh, like interchanges and things like that that are horrible for bikers and, and pedestrians. Um, maybe it's kind of already an inclu included in the recommendations we have, but I didn't know if there was a way we could highlight that better because Weathersfield does have a lot of interface with, with state roads and, and facilities. Uh, Kevin, to that point, we yeah, we have in the previous uh, chapters identified the uh, significance of um, DOT uh, in our road network, primarily, you know, one of the things I think they control all of the traffic lights. I don't think the town has responsibility for any. So any, you know, pedestrian traffic signalization changes or DOT, our main corridors, almost all of them, the main ones anyway, are DOT roads. So uh, I'd like your uh, suggestion about highlighting that, but it would, it's obvious that um, those recommendations as it relates to state roads will come shining, shining through. But uh, point about the, the, the uh, relationship um, and figuring out a way to maybe improve that is, is a good one. Agreed. Okay. Um, at this point, I think we're at the end of the planned presentation tonight. So uh, are there any other uh, items um, for the good of the group that anyone wants to um, bring out or announce. I see Kevin uh, uh, has his hand up. Yeah, I wanted to ask uh, Councilman Biggs if he is the new liaison to this committee or is he just a spy for the evening?
Hello all. So yes, um, recently there have been some changes, as you all know, and I am the new liaison for this committee. Excellent. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. And sorry I didn't uh, say anything earlier. I kind of just wanted to sit in and listen and not interrupt anything that you all already have working. So, Councillor, if it's if at some point you want to sit down with uh, Derek uh, and I, we'd be happy to uh, give you the Reader's Digest version of how we got to this point um, okay. and give you that background. So, just uh, don't don't hesitate to give us a yell if you want to do that. Uh, I, I'd love to to sit down with you all. Um, as some of you know, uh, what you're doing is dear to my heart. I'm an avid bike rider in town, pulling my boys through town and running through town. So. Um, I'm honored to be a part of it and able to be a liaison for you. That's that's great to hear. Any other, uh, Rob, I see your hand up. Just quickly, I just wanted to, just one mundane observation slash question, but um, on Main Street, we have these, the uh, pedestrian crosswalk signs that are in the, you know, that stand in the crosswalk. And from my, because I live here, have seen them make great strides in traffic calming but they are like beat up. I mean, the, the trucks, like the, this, the one on uh, Center Street, I mean, I wa you watch the trucks, they have to slow down, including the buses, but they hit them and they're getting plowed over. And then during the, this is, I don't know who to talk to, during the snowstorm, the physical services takes them out to plow, which makes sense, but they don't put them back in the sidewalk, in the crosswalk. So like this, this snowstorm, I waited probably f maybe three or four days and I literally went over and dug them out myself and carried them back to the crosswalks to put them in because it, it makes a big difference on places like um, Hartford Road, the one, the main crosswalk at Keeney Center. That one took me about 10 minutes to dig out of the snow because they just, they, they take it off the sidewalk and then they plow it under in snow. So, or, you know, so it's kind of like, I'm just trying to figure out if we could maybe get more of these things. We, we need some new ones because now these are so beat up and um, they're not even reflecting. And then that crosswalk too, like, I don't know whether it's probably just, I, it's like, you know, I live right here. That crosswalk didn't get plowed. Like they, they, they plowed the crosswalk entries, you know, by the Webby and Stevens and the King Center. And that storm was on like a Thursday, Saturday morning. I stepped over both piles. I went to the, I went to that coffee, the drum roll coffee. I asked the guy, do you have any, any customers, you know, mentioned that the crosswalks are they still have snow piles in front of them. He's like, I can't get them to move it. And it probably took two more days. Or Actually, that day I, I was crossing back and a police officer was coming at me and I waved him down. I, and I was like, can you tell somebody from the, see if you can get somebody from the town services just to plow through. So people, I mean, people are crossing there all the time. But I saw at least two or three people almost wipe out. And I don't know. It's one of those things like that has to be in the plan. I mean, residents have to clean their sidewalks, but sometimes the town services there, you know, it's a, it's a pedestrian mecca, but chucking those signs into the snow or plowing them in and not putting them back is like kind of like that's not a very pedestrian friendly town, you know, thing. But they're heavy too. Those things are. <laughs> so I don't know what they they we. I was thinking in the connectivity grant, if there's a way to purchase more of those or find a way to get. I don't know whether the town has an, an arsenal of those, but the ones that are on here now are, are really beat up. We'll make a note and pass, pass it on. Thank you. So there's two issues, there's two issues you were mentioning, uh, shoveling the uh, the ramps um, and then replacing the signs. Yeah. Okay. They really do work too. I mean, they really are the best traffic commerce I've seen. Okay. Any um, other? Yep. So um, I wanted, I'm not going to take a lot of time, but uh, I appreciate everybody's work on the committee and I know I've uh, missed a couple of meetings. Uh, we, the Weathersfield Bicycle Festival this year got canceled because of the pandemic. So uh, it was gonna be our seventh year and that was the second Sunday in June. Uh, we've already done the paperwork for the second Sunday in June this year, but I don't know if it's gonna happen. I mean, we can't crystal ball into the future to see if it's gonna be a reasonable thing to do then. So I've been thinking about ideas uh, for promoting and doing something fun uh, regarding bicycles in the springtime. And uh, I would appreciate any input on this, but as we have the scarecrows in the fall, 
I was thinking of maybe doing uh, like the Dutch do. They decorate their bikes uh, very ornately and they call them flower bikes. Uh, and we could maybe have a week or so of decorated bikes on Main Street and have either the different schools, you know, at a minimum, it could be, you know, five or six bikes, or maybe it could be a 10 or, or something like that. And where different groups would decorate bikes. Uh, and they would be like, you know, artificial flowers put around the bikes and different color schemes and different themes. Uh, and it was just a fun, it's a fun way of celebrating spring uh, in the same spirit of the scarecrows, of course, you don't want to leave them out there so long they get ratty. Uh, you want, you know, have a certain time limit on them, but whatever I would need to do to get that ball rolling and the who uh, does the scarecrows, you know, like how do they get approval for that? Um, but I, I would love to see our town do something kind of uh, fun like that in the springtime, just to celebrate bikes in spring and and something for morale. It's like the town needs a little bit of a morale boost in the spring because we still might be in the pandemic, you know? So maybe I was thinking like May, April or May and just having different clubs in the town or each school maybe decorate a bike and then put them out as for starters or maybe Bike Walk Weathersfield might wanna do one, maybe the Historical Society, maybe the Garden you know, whoever basically would want to do some, we just have an old bike and we paint it a basic color, give it to them, let them decorate it and then put it out there and lock it up for like, like the scarecrows basically. I don't know if anybody has any thoughts or feedback on that, I'd be welcome. Chris Trazik, do you want to jump in there? I was just going to say, so it's actually the shopkeepers that do the scarecrows. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and it might be worth just talking to them about whether they might be interested in partnering with you on that as a spring event. Okay. Um, and But all of the scarecrows are built by families, clubs, groups, and it's basically a contest. And I believe, and there are cash prizes, I believe, for the scarecrows as they're determined, but they're the ones that organize that and have put it together. So I would reach out to them. But while you were talking, I was thinking you might want to think about doing just a bicycle parade where people can decorate their bikes and then follow either the heritage bike route um, or just the one that goes through Old Weathersfield um, so that everyone can come and watch. But it could be a participatory people decorate their bikes and go for a ride for, you know, a couple an hour or so. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So. Yeah, I'm still liking the deck, the, the, the I mean, decorations like the scarecrows. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'll send some pictures along. Uh, if anybody's interested, just uh, email me or message me and I'll send some pictures and maybe bring them to the next meeting. Uh, Tom, the, the president of the shopkeepers is, I believe it's Joe Pascal. Okay. Um, he's relatively new to the leadership of the shopkeepers, but if it's, something that you know encourages people to come and visit old weathersfield the shopkeepers i i am i am sure would love to partner and figure out a way uh, uh to do that so that it gets on the map and people have another reason to to come to old weathersfield and support the businesses and and visit visitation and, and all of those kind of things so if you want to uh I, I can send you his information uh and introduce you to him if you wanted to at least see if it's something they want to get behind. Uh, they did the door decorating contest as well. So they, they have a history uh, and experience in, in doing those kind of things. Yeah. And Peter, can you just add that to the Heritage Commission agenda for this month? Sure. So we can also talk about it with the commission because yep. there's a couple of other spring events and I don't know whether it makes sense to roll it into those or, or, or what. Um, I think that, I think the, the beauty of what Tom's talking about is it's people aren't getting together in big right. groups and right. uh, you know it's likely that we're going to continue to have that uh, yeah. limitation so this mm -hmm. is just for people to come and stroll and yeah. you know take it take it all in so um right. uh, Health uh, department uh, approves yes there you go <laughs> i just wanted to add that maybe if it was in may it could be a memorial day celebration and instead of the floral theme which it, it could be both but maybe 
um, patriotic, you know, theme. Mm -hmm. I mean, patriotic could definitely be one of the themes, right? If not, you know, there could be that could always be included in there as well. And I love the idea of the parade. I think uh, tricycles riding down Main Street, all decorated, would be fabulous. Yeah. Let's hope we can get there, pandemic-wise. Yeah. So, yeah. So okay. we can talk. Tom, we'll talk about it at the Heritage Commission. Okay. Uh, thank you. As well, and and get back to you if we come up with any concrete suggestions. Okay. Thank you very okay. much. Yep. And my email is. T Brown at weathersfield.me so it makes it easy. Yeah. I'll find you on the list for the for the bike pedestrian committee. And I'm sure Peter's got it. So good. Okay. Anything else for the uh, good of the order here? Okay. Um, I think this is a new record for a length of a bike pedestrian committee meeting. So uh, another reminder, uh, photos, um, some of the photos, if we do that uh, decor bike decorating contest would be phenomenal to include in the plan. But please, if you have photos, send them my way. Our next meeting is February 11. Uh, so we will be getting back to you uh, with that. And um, at that, I think we are done for the evening and I appreciate everybody's uh, input, some great uh, thought and suggestion uh, went into this. Uh, these lists I will post on the um, website. So if you want to take another look uh, and have your own copy, I will be doing that shortly. So, um, and otherwise we will see you uh, in a, in a month's time. Great Thank going to whoever put all that into that. Yeah. Thanks for all your work, Peter. Okay, guys. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye. Good night.